Hello, my name is Lee Abramson. Thank you for featuring me at the Michigan Rehabilitation Conference. I have experienced several methods of using adaptive technology to facilitate my creative process and also using that process to gain reward and recognition for the art that I create. I hope to cover some of the pieces of the technology I use to express myself. Some of them are adaptive technologies, other are strictly technology that anyone can use to express themselves musically. I hope that some of the technologies that I will be discussing will allow your clients to have more productive and satisfying lives through use of adaptive technology. I am known as the One Finger Musician. So, here's the one finger moving around, and the thumb does the clicking. There are people out there who have diminished capability for using their hands or who don't, can't use their hands at all and use a head mouse and they rely on assistive wear keystrokes um, Dwellix technology Yeah. Two of our students couldn't make it, so that makes it a little bit easier for us to fit in. Okay. But I'm uh, I'm going to vi video our presentation for them. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Well, I understand that the uh, nature of the class is about augmentative communication. Yes. Yes, it is. So what I'll do is I'm going to show you two of my augmentative communication software packages that I use. Okay, my first, the one I use the most for augmentative technology it's called Keystroke. Okay. It's a on-screen keyboard. So for this, people could could be looking at your key, at your screen if they just yeah. If you get behind me, okay. you should yeah. be able to see what I'm doing. All right. Can everybody see at least something here? Okay. So there's that yeah. keyboard you just <laughs> talked about. Yeah. And if you notice. Above the numbers, you have a list of words. What that does is it acts as a predictor of whatever you're typing. And I type H, and I narrowed it down to the ten most common words in, in begin in H. 
type AG does the same thing. AGL narrows it down, and the word I wanted was hello. And so all I have to do to save myself three keystrokes is click hello. And it automatically puts a space, a uh, space between the word hello and the next word. So that saves you keystroke too. Let's say I wanted to say hello there. Uh, since there often comes after hello, it's right there ready for me to click. And I say I want to do a comma. It backs up and it does the punctuation and then gives me a space. So let's say I want to type how. The word how is available to me after only one keystroke. Type the letter A, and the word I want is already available to me. Uh, the word U, I don't have to type anything, it's right there for me. <coughs> yeah, I can type letter D, doing right there. So, you know, ordinarily, if I had to type every letter of every word I want, it's very tiring, especially because I uh, type kind of slowly. I use I don't use fine motor control. Whenever I want a letter, I have to sort of take bigger and then smaller and smaller steps in order for me to type what I want to type. So this software made by assistiveware.com is uh, particularly, it's been a major advance in my quality of life. ago, I found out that there was a voice banking system called Model Talker at the University of Delaware. I created my own voice by recording about 2,000 utterances and uploading them to the university. After they analyzed the data from the utterances I uploaded, the University of Delaware sent me an application that allowed me to type anything I wanted and have it sound just like me. So that anything I typed into the model talker screen could speak in a voice that sounded exactly as I spoke at the time. If I ever lose the ability to speak because of Model Talker, I'll still be able to speak in a way that everyone will recognize as Lee Abramson's voice. Thank you for featuring me at the Michigan Rehabilitation Conference. Thanks for featuring me and the Michigan Rehabilitation Conference.
I am determined to hurry. One good thing about this is hope. One good thing about this is hope. I need to see the doctor about hiccups. Me really mad that Harry hid. It makes me really mad that Harry hid. I see. a guitar when I was 12 years old. And I took all my bar mitzvah money and bought a bass guitar. I lived in East Lansing until I was 17 years old. My father won a Fulbright grant to teach in Israel for what would have been my senior year. But I graduated a year early and went to the freshman year program at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Then I began a college career at the University of Michigan. The University of Michigan. After I graduated in 1993, I moved to Ypsilanti for a year and then moved down to Austin, Texas. And uh, eventually began a, a career in information technology at Lotus Development Corporation, which was at the time considered to be like a hippie software company. But when IBM took over it, it was sort of like the Borg Collective taking over the... Uh, planet and uh, assimilated and destroyed the Lotus uh, subculture. I had an entrepreneurial streak dating back to 1997 when I was off work for three weeks because of a surgery. I tried to find out if anybody was selling pork rinds on the internet. It turns out nobody was. So I found a pork rind manufacturer in Texas near the Mexican border. I called up the owner and asked him, if he would like to sell his products on the internet. So I set him up with a UPS account. I bought his bags for $1 a bag and sold them on the internet for $4 a bag. I even had my own custom chip clips that said porkrun.com on them and I printed up 60 t-shirts that had the slogan porkrun.com send them some damn pork rinds 
which was my official business slogan. Parkrun.com was set up to be a novelty gift store where you could send park runs to your friends' as gifts for graduation anniversary or whatever. But I quickly found out that people weren't sending them as gifts. They were ordering them for themselves for the Atkins dye craze that was going on at that time. But the Parkrun.com business didn't have much longevity because Amazon.com came along and soon other people were selling park runs at much more reasonable prices. So now Parkrun.com is just a humor site. In 1998, I started playing with a rock and roll band called Punchy. We recorded a CD at a studio in Austin, Texas, and by the end of two years, we had moved from playing twice a month in bars around Austin to playing every other night in bars across the state. We sold a thousand CDs out of the trunk of our car and got paid as much as $500 a night to play at some bars, plus all the free beer we could drink. So, at one point, I was holding a decent paying job at IBM. I was bringing in $500 in profits selling pork rinds and making $500 a month playing in a rock and roll band. But that came all crashing down to a halt when my spinal cord injury happened and I couldn't walk or dress myself anymore, let alone play the bass guitar. I lived in Austin, Texas until my mobility was sufficiently impaired in 2001 that I couldn't take care of myself anymore. And then I moved back up to East Lansing and stayed in my parents' house. My physical impairments began to deteriorate. And in 2004, I had a fall in the kitchen and uh, gave myself a spinal contusion. And after that time, was no longer able to walk again. In 2004, I had a second spinal surgery in Lansing, Michigan. Shortly afterward, I developed torticollis or head leaning to the side. So they recommended I go to the University of Michigan Hospital to see a neurosurgeon to see if I needed the third surgery to stabilize my cervical spine. The uh, chief of the neurology department said that my spine was stable and there must be something else going on. So, 
as a matter of routine, they gave me an EMG test, and the attending physician said that the initial results of the test was indicated that I probably had ALS which was a very shocking and disturbing thing to hear. The next day they repeated the EMG test and the head of the ALS clinic in Ann Arbor who was uh, he phrased it in kind of an amusing way in retrospect. He said, yeah, it's ALS. Um, it's probably been going on for a couple of years now. It's kind of a bummer. That's the way he phrased it. After my diagnosis in 2005, I was in a state of shock for a couple of months. Then my friend in Austin said to me, the only way you're going to get out of this is if you get back to making music. So, I took his advice and started taking classes at Berkeley School of Music Online in um, songwriting and music business. And I also started taking composition lessons and reading a music theory textbook with Ron Newman. Ron Newman is a professor of composition in the music school at Michigan State University. I took lessons with him for about a year and a half and learned all about music theory. At the same time I was taking classes at Berkeley Music Online about music business and also the art of setting words and lyrics to music. which was a skill that I developed over the course of the next few years. The next phase in my musical progression was when I started writing music with music notation software and collaborating with musicians all over the world who were users of GarageBand on the Mac. I made compositions where I would send people I met on the internet the background score, the melody, and the lyrics in a lead sheet. And they would email me back an MP3 of their vocals. And I took the background music and included their vocals from the people all over the world 
and took bounced them all together into musical compositions that included vocals. So I was able to collaborate with musicians and vocalists all over the world through a website called iCompositions.com. It's a clearinghouse, sort of like a dating site for people who use Macintosh software to collaborate with each other. People meet each other and do what they call collaborations. I wrote about 20 songs on that website where I recruited people all over the world to sing. I took a class in making music with Logic Pro at Berkeley School of Music Online in 2008 and I have refined my skill in the use of Logic Pro as a digital audio workstation so that I can get things done very quickly, including the use of model talker voice synthesizer sound files that I capture and enter into the computer and drop into Logic Pro. I released my first full-length CD under the persona Ace No Face which was a piano rock CD with the title Toxic Charm. I was looking for a new project when I asked my mother if she could think of a poet whose work I could set to music. She recommended Rumi. And I, my next musical project was under my own name, Lee Abramson, and the name of the album was Rumi Music where I took eight Rumi poems and recorded a genre of music called down tempo, which is a relaxing electronic music that features the electric piano and female vocals. I used Ron Newman to play the electric piano and Abigail English, my massage therapist, to sing the roomy vocals. With no limits, no limits, no limits, a presence. A presence more beautiful than Venus, Venus. Lots of people are familiar with the song Black Girl because Nirvana covered it 
in their unplugged concert in New York City. The uh, history of the song, the song was written by Lead Belly or Hoodie Lead Better, who um, invented the 12 string guitar and uh, was known to detune his guitar from an E all the way down to a C, which gave his guitar a unmistakable, huge sound. And uh, 50 years later, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana used the the um, idea of a detuned guitar to create a genre of music called grunge that was developed in the 90s. And on Nirvana's unplugged performance on MTV, they finished the performance with their rendition of Black Girl by Lead Belly. So it's the most popular song that Lead Belly ever wrote. I decided to cover that song and um, using the Model Talker voice synthesizer to uh, sing the melody in three different octaves which uh, no human being can actually do. And I had two instances of just saying the verse without intonation and uh, three instances where it was recorded in the middle octave, lower octave, and then higher octave. So I used Model Talker voice synthesizer in music, but a more practical application of Model Talker is for use in anybody who is diagnosed with a condition in which they may lose their voice particularly ALS, which uh, fairly quickly will get someone to lose their capacity to speak coherently.
Hey, it's me, your friend from back east. How are things in Texas? Pretty good. Man, you've got to send me something cool from Texas. Porkrind.com. Yeah, sure, I'll send you some pork rinds. Sweet. How are you going to do that? You just go to www.porkrind.com, click on the gifts link. I've been sending pork rinds to all my friends and relatives. No way. P-O-R-K-R-I-N-D.com. Sure, Parkrind.com's got all kinds of snack gifts, and they deliver anywhere in the world. Each gift comes with a custom greeting card that they put my name on. You're kidding. No, no. I sent some to my friend in Boston for his birthday, one to my sister to congratulate her on her graduation, one for my parents' anniversary. Dude, aren't your parents Jewish? Yeah, well, I read last week that the Union of Orthodox Rabbi said that pork rinds are kosher. Come on. Well, the coolest thing is how easy it is. You don't have to shop at a store, no separate greeting card to buy. They take all the major credit cards. Damn. Maybe I'll send my brother some pork rinds for his wedding. Pork rinds. Dot com. Send them some damn pork rinds. Thank you for allowing me to participate in this conference. People with disabilities these days have access to adaptive technology that can let them make the most of their talents and abilities and be productive members of society and allow them to succeed in the workplace.